there where we were working. And what we were doing was the Nature Conservancy was trying to uh, uh, remove sheep from a portion of the island on this mm -hmm. north side. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they were repairing fences. So what I did was fixed fences. So I started in 82 and I worked my way through the 80s, volunteering whenever I could. Uh, I'm David Dewey, and official title is Facilities Manager for the TNC here on Santa Cruz. But it's sort of like a ranch manager. Mm -hmm. A ranch manager who runs a ranch that doesn't grow anything anymore. So uh, all the jobs a rancher does, mm -hmm. except I don't grow anything. Don't have to make a profit. Don't have to make any money. It's a good thing. Here comes the moon. She's changed. Started off a long roundabout way as a botanist, going to Chico State, mm -hmm. and uh, to make ends meet. While I was going to school, I uh, worked at a farm in Chico, and uh, it grew kiwi fruit, which was new to the United States then, and. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, I figured, hey, this is sort of fun. So I stopped, dropped out of school, and uh, I was working on my master's in mm -hmm. botany. But mm -hmm. uh, I dropped out of school and just became a farmer. For 30 years, I was in Chico. A kiwi farmer. Yeah, well, we had cattle, but we uh -huh. made, made the money with the kiwi fruit. Uh -huh. So for 30 years, that's what I did. And as I There was a little notice that Peter Schuyler, who ran the island for the TNC in the early 80s, mm -hmm. put in the California Audubon Society newsletter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got the newsletter and I saw, hey, this little tiny blurb said, looking for volunteers to work on Santa Cruz Island. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'd love to do that in March of 82. And we went to the upper Central Valley at, uh, west of here. Uh -huh. And uh, there was, the hills were covered with cattle in these beautiful fields and you looked across the valley there and there was all this pine forest and uh, in the background there was the sheep on the hills. Mm -hmm. I instantly fell in love with the island and I thought, man, this is a special place. What I find fascinating is the change. Mm -hmm. What is changing? And uh, there's been a lot of change, especially since my limited time on the island, 82. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've moved the sheep and the cattle and the pigs and the turkeys and uh, a lot of uh, uh, what we call invasive weeds have been removed and, uh, and nothing stays the same, everything is changing. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to me to see how the numbers of foxes, which declined almost to nothing, are coming back. And, you know, there's been a lot of success on the island. First by removing the sheep and then mm -hmm. the pigs. Mm -hmm. And the, when they removed the pigs at that time, this was 2004 to, or 2004 to six, more or less, mm -hmm. uh, this was the biggest island in the world where pigs had been introduced and then eradicated. Wow. Wow. There was a major project. The biggest threat to California uh, I think is suburban sprawl and, and man's development. Mm -hmm. And uh, landowners that own cattle ranches or sheep ranches or the big, big acreage in the hills, shoot, those are the best friends of California's environment there are. The and uh, the island is sort of pristine mm -hmm. in many ways. I mean, they're obviously all the European grasses that came with uh, early settlers. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're fighting to keep this pretty much, not as it was when the Nature Conservancy found it, but better. Mm -hmm. Because it was severely overgrazed by the sheep and the pigs rooted everything up. And uh, we're only five years into recovery after the pigs are removed. and. Uh, 25 years after the sheep and cattle were removed, mm -hmm. it's made a big difference. But uh, it's a part of Southern California that is, has the potential to be a, a beautiful native spot. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is, that's completely beside 
the natural value of islands. Mm -hmm. Islands are so special. But there is a lot of people who come to the island who work through the field station or mm -hmm. through the TNC mm -hmm. who are studying all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to, uh, to see what they are learning here. Right. It's so a, it's a good laboratory. regular rancher, he is a jack of all trades. Right, you gotta know. I, I run into people all the time who, uh, who find a niche in their working life mm -hmm. and they uh, are sort of specialists. Mm -hmm. And my whole life I've been a, a generalist, jack of all trades. And I think, boy, I found out my little niche in life there is a place for somebody who isn't good at, really good at something, <laughs> but, but good at a lot, lot of things. <laughs> and that's how uh, I sort of fit in here, I think. And don't you think... Squeaky wheel gets the grease, right. speaking in cliches. And uh, uh, last week, or actually it's a month ago, it was set up there was going to be some volunteers here to work on the fences. Mm -hmm. So that was a loud squeak. I had to set my week around around working on fences, right. which we did this week. And and then she's changing soon. The favorite part is it's always something different. Uh -huh. There is really no favorite, though I could say there are some least favorites. Like <laughs> you caught me yesterday digging a hole. Oh. <laughs>